Okay. <clears throat> uh, we have Ian Taylor with us from the Center for Research and Computing here at University of Notre Dame. He's going to give you a demo of the home cell that Yark uh, spoke to about briefly in his lightning talk earlier this morning. Okay. Hi. Um, I just wanted to recap a little bit on what Yark said this morning so we could get back into kind of the idea of those whole tales. So essentially, at a very high level, this is what technically it's trying to do. It's trying to package things up in such a way that they, be, they can be repeatable. So, um, so a publication um, would have some, you know, obviously a paper, and then it will have some data and methods um, that are running on the data. Uh, so how do you package those up in a reusable way so that they can be aggregated and kind of clicked on and um, instantly um, replayed or re-executed? So we have this concept of a tail from whole tail, <clears throat> and that basically is a fusion between a container with some software around it and dependencies and so forth. A front end, um, and a front end is, is something that basically provides an access to the data. So this could be a Jupyter notebook, it could be a command line, it could be anything that you can use to interact with the data. Um, and then the data itself. So, so essentially we're, we're talking about a Docker container here, being able to mount um, data, um, but software um, the research methods to be able to access that data and run this and so on. If I <coughs> kind of plug that together a little bit more, so essentially that's what's going on on the right hand side. So we have the container and, uh, um, with data and methods that we can run. Um, and then the architecture on the left is basically how, how we do all of this. So we have two components we have a back end component, which is Duda, uh, which is actually the whole tail API implemented using something called Duda. And then the front end is a completely separate application written in Ember.js, um, and that talks through the REST API to the back end to um, coordinate them. Again. And the scene is getting in my way. Can you unmute yourself again for the camera? Oh. <coughs> I don't know that. I thought it was unmuted, but. Sorry, I should... Okay, so. Um... So this is the, the Gerda REST API. So this has things like uh, things that computers can understand, like folders and users. And uh, this is an instance of a tail. This is an image, which is a Docker container for a tail. And we have also uh, a tail itself. So, so the front end uses all these, uh, these wonderful things to create stuff. So let's look at the front end. So this project's about a year in now. This is, um, this is not really released at, at the moment, but we thought we'd kind of give a space as where we're at. Um, so on the, um, the dashboard has uh, a menu, one of these kind of hamburger icon menus that comes out. But if you prefer the old style, you can kind of have a fixed menu um, and switch between those. And then um, basically the, the, the dashboard displays the three main things that um, it's all about, uh, which are the front ends, the research environments, um, the data sets that can be imported into into the system and currently we're supporting two external systems, Data One and Globus. Um, and I'm going to show you a demo of that in a little bit. And then we have the tails that kind of marry all those things together. Um, so we could look in, explore here and look at some data and filter lists and search for data that way. And we could do the same for tails. So maybe first we'll just run a tail. I have something here called Isolated Galaxy. So let me view that. Um, I could put a name for this, so uh, let's see, demo, and launch the tail. So what, this already, we've already created this tail in the past that contains a reference to the data, contains the um, front end we're going to use. Um, so we can execute that, <laughs> and that kicks off a container um, and launches what it needs on the container. So you can start the front end on that container once it's started, or you can check the status. So let me start the front end. That's going to kick off the um, Jupyter notebook, which was configured for that tail, and then you can um, uh, run the notebook. So, so this isolated Galaxy notebook um, basically just uh, loads in some data and displays it. But if we um, go back to here and pull up a terminal here, then we can see what's going on underneath. So, what we have here is we have um, the, a couple of IPython notebooks there, and then we also have the data directory. So if I go into data, um, then this has two subdirectories. If you go into Galaxy, that's actually the real, that's the data that we're going to process. So that's the data set um, that we'll use for this one. So let me go to the G 
Jupyter Notebook and press play. And that's going to run, it's going to load that data in, do some calculations on it and create something that a scientist would be able to look at. This is a slice for a galaxy uh, when it uh, eventually comes up and uh, zoomed in uh, to a width of uh, 20 kiloparsecs. So, okay, so there's our galaxy. So that's the kind of, that's the end result. This is how you can use these things. So, so I also wanted to show you how to develop one from scratch. So, so let's go back, let's um, close those. Yep, I really want to leave. leave. And let's um, get some data. So we have a data tab here. And the data tab is uh, basically a file browser. And, you know, it acts like a file browser. So we can uh, go into, say, the public directory here. And I can find my... Okay, and I can pick stuff up here, you know, if I want to drop that in, I can drop down and upload it and so forth. So, and we also have a, a operations to move stuff around. So we sort of modeled this loosely around Google Drive, but we, you know, tried to kind of customize it for this, this project. So you can um, do all sorts, so you can get your own data, just drag it in, drop it into the interface. But we also can connect to external things. So we can connect to Globus, uh, that. That work is in progress now, so within the next month, we're hoping to have Globus fully integrated. But we do have um, Data Wallet integrated. So if I paste in this DOI here and search, that will go to the Data Wallet API and return the metadata about the data set. And this data set basically has uh, water usage in millions of gallons per day across uh, the whole of the United States. <coughs> so. I'm going to choose that and I'm going to register that data set. What that is going to do, it's going to go to data wall <coughs> using the API. It's going to find what it can find out about the data set on data wall. And if there is a pointer to other objects, it will create a directory and it imports all of the data, but it doesn't import the, the data per se. It basically imports kind of uh, um, pointers to the data. When you, when you click on the data in the system or use it, then it's actually transferred across. So if I go back to the home directory, uh, this data set has just been imported from data one. So we can use this and take a look at it. And it's basically some Excel files, uh, some description. And in fact, if we go to data one and paste in the same DOI, data one will, um, look, there's a better description. Um, well, actually it's the same files, but um, they have an abstract here. So this is water use information across Canada, Alaska, and the entire of the United States. So how can we use that? So we have, um, we have some data um, and we need to make a tail. So let's go ahead and create a tail. So we do that by doing compose um, water usage uh, demo. And I think this does it protect us. So let's do that. Let's go to next. And we choose the front end. We've got two front ends of support so far. One is Jupyter and the other is um, a Jupyter uh, notebook with YT extensions uh, installed on the container. So you can do kind of uh, physics -y stuff. So I'm going to um, select that one, go through to the next stage. This allows you to pick the data set. So let's choose the data set that we just um, imported and go through and click submit. And that will create a tail. So now that tail should be available in these. So I can go, let me go through to explore here and find the water usage, which is this one. So let's take a look at that and launch that tail. <coughs> oh, the galaxy team is still there. So <laughs> let me call it that. So this um, uh, allows us to um, look at this data. So if we, if we look, pull up a terminal window here, and look at the data directory. Then we have uh, this uh, Excel files, all of the data files that um, we just imported from data one. And then I do have some WT demo that I uploaded earlier. And this does, and this, um, does um, this, this basically, this basically imports the data set. So, so you can see here, it's just important from data um, and an Excel file. And then it's doing some processing on that data. Um, loading it in, uh, plugging it into this um, something called uh, a Boca JS, and, um, and it will display it. So let's run that and see what happens. This should take a few seconds to load. 
the JavaScript initially, and then it'll load the data um, and hopefully give us a nice graph of Texas uh, water usage. Okay, there's, so there's Texas, and this has loaded the graph with all the water usage in 2005 in that state. So uh, this quick kind of demo, but it gives you the idea of kind of where we're going with this and how these tails can make it easier potentially to kind of wrap things up. Okay, thanks. Thank you. No, so so the um, so the Jupyter notebook is one image. So so you can make different images. Right? Okay. We just made two so, so far: one with Jupyter, one with YT. But as we go along, we're going to be creating more new front ends and allow people to add their own. So you can add whatever, right? So you could add a workflow system, you could add a command line, you could add your own toolkits in the background, or whatever you wanted to. However, you want to interact with the data. So it's extendable. These tails have uh, a DOI or something that you could get to? Yeah. Yeah, so that's phase two of the project. So we will be generating DOIs for these so, so they, can, they can be located <laughs> you know, and attached to a publication. Yeah. Are whales explorable? Like, is it a Docker container that you can download after it's been all composed and can run locally? Or does it have to run? Is it limited to running in your? In your runtime, right? Um, so, so the tail itself is just some metadata about the ID of the folder. Now, the idea of the folder is specific to the back end of whole tail, but there are external APIs to get that data, right? <laughs> and then the um, <clears throat> image is also a reference to an image that's on Gerda on the whole tail back end. So. I mean, so the most convenient way is to run it within here. However, there's APIs that could be used to run it around.